Hey Nail Besties, welcome back. We've got a lot to cover today. I want to start off by trying a new technique that one of my subscribers actually recommended to minimize your exposure and uh, risk of flare up. We're also going to be trying a new UV glue from Melody Susie. I am really excited about this because the ingredients are nothing that would flare my particular allergy. I have been burned by the cheaper companies before. So as an extra precaution, we're also going to be doing a dip. So let's talk dip because the nail industry just loves to hate on dip powders for whatever reason. And so I am here with the Nail Boo Kit. Again, not sponsored by any brand. I buy everything with my own money, but I did find this kit and it has everything you need to get started. Now, primarily I've always used Sparkle and Company. I have a bunch of their dip powders, but I wanted to try something new and see if Nail Boo is actually all the hype because I see those ads everywhere. It's a relatively affordable kit, so I wanted to test it out and see if it was worth recommending to you guys. Last but not least, we will also be talking about a question that has long been debated in the nail industry. Is dip powder and acrylic the same thing? So let's get into it. We've got these powders here. We've got some very beautiful colors, but we are going to do just clear today. This here is their builder powder. And that is all we are going to be using. So we're just gonna say bye to these for now. All right, so first step, we are going to buff the nail and remove the shine. I've already done cuticle prep. I like to do that a day earlier just so that any cuts or damage to the eponychium has a chance to heal. All right, so I've gone ahead and buffed the nail and now I'm going to be going in with a dehydrator. And this is the only thing I own from this company, Model Ones because honestly, it doesn't really matter where you get your dehydrator. It's pretty much just alcohol and acetone. Next up, I will be using Vita Prime from Light Elegance. This is uh, the only primer I have found thus far that works for me. If y'all didn't know, primers can be very high in HEMA as well. All right, and now we are ready to start our dip application. So let's take our base coat here, and we're gonna just brush on a very, Nice, even, but thin layer. Personally, I like the pour over method. I just think it comes out much cleaner that way. And of course, if you are doing this on others, make sure you use a separate jar, but this is only for my use. Okay, and then we're gonna let that dry before we brush the excess off. Now we're gonna go in with a second, very thin coat. And essentially what this is doing is it's giving a buffer between gel products and your nail plate. All right, and that is that. Once you like how that looks, we're gonna go ahead and activate. Now we are ready to buff. It is actually crazy how fast I am at dip powder because I've been doing it for so long. And so dip powder just gets so much hate, but really it's a great medium. It's so beginner friendly. It's a lot safer for allergies as well because it doesn't really have any monomers. If you didn't know, dip powder base is cyanoacrylate and it's a very large molecule that's unlikely to penetrate the skin. Can you be allergic to it? Absolutely, you can be allergic to anything, but significantly less likely than with monomers like HEMA and HPMA. Now, typically at this point, I would use TAC by Light Elegance, but I really want to test the retention of this Melody Suzy glue all on its own. All right, so they come in a pack of two and they are very, very inexpensive. So these two were like $7 at the time that I purchased them. I'm a little, I'm a little scared, but if this works, that's gonna be really great. Uh, all right, so I've gone ahead and etched the tips with my e-file and we're gonna go ahead and apply. <laughs> All right, and here we are. Now, I realize that although I am trying to test the dip method and see what the retention looks like with that, I am also testing whether this flares me out. And adding a buffer of dip between the layers of this and my nail is probably not the best way to do that. So in this hand, I went ahead the way I would normally do it with no dip powder, and let's see. I'm not gonna lie, you guys, this is by far the worst heat spike I have ever had on a product. I mean, even just the flash cure was painful, <laughs> but I'm actually someone who loves the feeling of heat spikes. I don't know, I'm weird like that, but 
The heat spikes on this are brutal. It's not a great sign. Usually I'll react after the first day. All right, here we go. Let's see how it goes. Three hours later. All right, y'all. So unfortunately it appears I am reacting. Ignore my Benadryl drenched fingers. But yeah, I mean, this bad, this fast, this 1000% has Hema in it. I also realize I have to go to work tomorrow and I don't want to go with nails looking like this. So I'm going to just paint them with regular polish and wait it out and hope for the best. One day later. This is lotion, not flooding. We're already at the oozing stage. Oh, it's gnarly. Again, the reaction is much worse on my right hand where I used it directly. Uh, I've got them slathered with cuticle cream, Benadryl cream, like whatever I can find. And they are gnarly, you guys. Ugh. And so the crazy thing is that it's usually my left hand that flares up, but in this instance, it's nowhere near as bad as my right hand. So that tells me, because my right hand is where I used it without the dip layer, and so that tells me it's 1000% this product. And so finally on day three, when I got home from work, I just had to take them off because I could not withstand it any longer. This is by far the absolute worst allergic reaction I have ever had to any product. So I don't know what the heck they're putting in this, but I have had milder reactions to actual products with 30% HEMA in them. And here we are post soak off. Don't worry guys, it's not as bad as it looks. It's worse. But y'all want to keep playing with the cheap polishes. Crazy. I'm telling you, it's not worth it. All right, so it's been about a week and... We're looking pretty gnarly. This is by far the worst reaction I have ever had. So I don't know what the heck they are putting in that. Somebody actually commented on my TikTok that it could be the acroloyal morpholine, whatever, which is just as sensitizing as HEMA. And honestly, in my case, it might be even worse because again, I've never reacted this badly. However, I am happy to report that the whole dip situation actually does kind of work because my reaction on my left hand is significantly less than my right hand. And it's usually the opposite. My left hand was the one that I used beetles on, the one that usually reacts the most and first. So it was really interesting to see how there was very little reaction on my left hand since I used the dip powder layer first. And my right hand is just completely and absolutely and utterly just screwed. Absolutely screwed. So yeah, that was a total fail. Definitely do not recommend the Melody Susie glue. I do, however, recommend the Nail Boo Dip Powder Kit, and that will be linked in the description if y'all want to go and get that. I also really love the Sparkle & Co. dips. All right, so we're gonna just go ahead and do some press-ons because as you can see, I have an event to go to and we cannot go looking like this. But I am also not risking to make this worse because at this point, this one here is so bad, I feel like I might actually lose this nail. So we are going to just do some sticky tabs and some quick press-ons. All right, so while you watch me make these press-ons, I wanna talk a little bit about what I said at the beginning of the video. Is dip powder acrylic? I actually recently just had this argument on a Facebook group because for whatever reason, nail techs just love telling you that dip powder and acrylic are the same thing. So for example, this happened to me countless times back when I still used to go to salons. Every time I asked for a dip, especially if it was something complex like a French dip or an ombre dip, and then immediately they would bust out the monomer and I'd be like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? I asked for a dip, this is acrylic. And they'd be like, oh honey, it's the same thing. And then they would argue with me that it was the same thing that it was easier to apply with a brush. I could do an ombre dip just fine on myself. Yeah, it's a little bit more time consuming, but it is indeed doable. And granted, this was long before I got my allergy. It was long before I even knew that you could be allergic to nail products. But it just really always annoyed me because I would ask for one particular service and they wanted to give me another. There were multiple reasons why I just never liked getting acrylic. And the main one was just the really, really strong monomer smell, and it would usually give me heat spikes. And I was not one of those people that was Delulu and thought that dip was actually better for your nails because it had vitamins or whatever. Uh, I just liked dip. I, that's what I wanted. So uh, it was always just really annoying that they would always say it was the same thing. So let's get down to it, right? Is it the same thing? 
The answer is yes and no. And the reason I say that is because while yes, dip is a more finely milled acrylic powder, it's not acrylic because it all comes down to semantics, right? So what we know as acrylic is applied with monomer, whereas dip is applied with a cyanoacrylate base glue. So the method of application is very different and therefore they are not the same thing. And to somebody with an allergy, that is a huge deal because if somebody were to slather acrylic on me right now, I would have a horrid reaction because acrylic monomer contains HPMA. So I would really like for all the nail techs online and at the salon to please just stop saying it's the same thing. It's not. And to somebody with an allergy, you're going to give them a very painful reaction because people who don't know any better and are allergic, they're going to trust you with their nail health. And if you're telling them that it's the same thing and they have no idea that monomer is going to give them a reaction, then they're just going to trust you and have a horrid reaction. So why even spread that misinformation on the internet for other nail techs and unsuspecting clients to see when it's just not true? You want to have the gotcha moment about acrylic powder being the same as dip powder. If you have ever tried to use monomer with dip powder, you're going to have a really bad time. It's going to be like all streaky and because it's not meant for it. It's more finely milled than powder that is meant for application with monomer. So another reason why they're not the same thing. So in general, just no, not the same thing. Stop saying that. All right. Anyway, here is the finished look. It's not my best work, but I only have 20 minutes to do it, so I'm pretty proud of it, and it's my super cute last summer set. Anyway, that is all for today's video. Thank you all for tuning in and watching my most painful reaction yet. I actually ended up doing another set, and this is using Pink Ice by Bling Galleria. This is also a press-on set. It's been about two weeks now, and you can see that my reaction is mostly healed. But yeah, it was brutal. And if you see this and you still want to risk this by using cheap polishes, and I don't know what to tell you, friend, other than make sure you are subscribed to my channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.